Hi everyone, I want to read to you a tweet of Mossab Yusuf, son of Hamas, who has spoken about Israel's upcoming Rafa operation and the hostility and opposition that it's getting from some people around the world because the points he makes are so important. He says, Israel doesn't need anyone's approval for the upcoming Rafa operation. Number one, removing Hamas Islamists from power. Two, bringing the Israeli hostages home. Three, ending decades of totalitarian, tyrannical and a brutal regime. Four, ensuring the security of Jews and Arabs. Five, preventing Islamists from repeating their crimes in the future. Six, paving the way for long lasting peace in the Middle East. Obviously, you cannot have peace for as long as Hamas and the Hamas ideology reigns. So all these things depend on the success of Rafa's operation, Mossab says. This war is consequence of the world's pressure for a ceasefire in the previous five wars with Hamas. That's a great point. We can't give Hamas another free ticket for the capital crimes they have been committing. For the sake of the Arab and Jewish children, I fully support Rafa's operation as planned. This is basic sanity. Basic sanity. The threat has to be removed and the civilian loss of life is entirely at the hands of Hamas and frankly their society has a level of complicity which he himself Mossab Yusuf has said the son of a Hamas co-founder and one of the leaders he says that Gazan society is complicit and I completely agree and this is not some belief these are facts the polling tells us the majority of Palestinians, of Arabs in Gaza and the West Bank and Judea and Samaria still support what Hamas did on October 7th. This was from a poll done by a Palestinian polling uh, society done in March, literally a few weeks ago. So when you've got the majority of them supporting what Hamas do, um, surely there's a level of complicity there. Because I feel like if... So Israel did something so obscene in my name, I'd feel a moral duty to stand up and say this is wrong and to find ways to resist. And yes, it may be difficult for them to do that, but you, they are suffering as well as a result of all this. But they don't seem to be. Why aren't we seeing Gazans saying to Israel, please, can you help us? Calling for Hamas to surrender themselves turning themselves into the IDF. Why are they doing that? If they're suffering so much, why are they saying, Israel, please, we don't want a part of this, or trying to stop Hamas from doing what they're doing? And trying, f are we seeing any pockets of resistance? We're seeing, we, occasionally we see videos of people saying, oh, this is Hamas's fault. Okay, what's the next step in that? There has to be some level of complicity. That's how we held German society to. They voted them in. They voted Hamas in. Now, yes, they haven't had elections for a long time, but polling is telling us that this is what they continue to support. And yes, there may be some level of ter and terror and fear, which is stopping them from saying from, from, from resisting more. But at the end of the day, it is their responsibility to at least articulate that they don't like what's happening We're in private polls which they don't have to uh, worry about. Are they going to get caught for what they're saying? And at the very least to try and protect themselves by, by, by saying to Israel, you know, please help us. And yet we put it, lay all the responsibility at Israel's door. The terrible suffering of the babies and the children who of course don't yet have moral agency is the fault and responsibility of their parents. Their parents who choose to be a part of what Hamas did, to support what they did, and not to find ways to resist, or at the very least articulate, not in my name. It's a society that is basically modern day Nazi-esque. And I do believe that people can change. And that's why it's so tragic, because as Jews, we would always prefer, always prefer, people who support evil would change their ways and we believe they can. The fact that many Israeli Arabs abhor what happened on October 7th is proof of that. Even serve in the IDF even though they don't have to. It's funny people talk about apartheid. There are some privileges that Israeli Arabs have by being in, in Israel that Jew Jews don't have. But 
The point is we do believe that people can change. But our primary role is to, or Israel's primary role, is to protect their people, the security of their people. It's not our moral responsibility to fix a broken society that is not in our control, that is not part of our society. Our job is to protect ourselves. Yes, very nice, teach the world, but once you have security. That's how we approached fighting the Nazis in World War II. And it is an exactly fair comparison to today. People talk about the meeting of the minds. There's got to be a meeting of the minds. Sometimes in life, you cannot have a meeting of the minds. I'm all for meeting of the minds. But in this case, when it comes to good and evil, when it came to the Allies versus Nazi Germany, there can't be a meeting of the minds. Sometimes there's going to have to be one victory and the other side having defeat. We all know that's basic logic. And so does someone who was the son of a Hamas co-founder and leader. If he can understand this, so can the rest of us. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to watch another one, click here. If you want to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest JTV content, click here. And if you're feeling really keen, you can click the join button down below underneath this video where you can get perks including early access to new videos and private live discussions with me where we can talk about JTV content and strategy moving forward and I'll get to hear from you. Thanks again for watching.